So you've bought a new telescope. It comes with a few accessories, probably one or two eyepieces. But my guess is the first thing that you're going to think after you take it out, set it up, and go out for your first night of stargazing is what can I buy next? In today's video, I'm going to help you answer that question by taking a look at one of the most useful accessories for any telescope, a Barlow lens. If you enjoy this video, please like it and join our growing community of amateur astronomers by subscribing to this channel. Also, be sure to let me know in the comments section below any questions that you have about Barlow lenses or any experiences that you have from ones that you currently own. Now let's get started by taking a look at how a Barlow lens actually works and how they can be one of the most useful things that you ever buy for your eyepiece collection. Named after English mathematician Peter Barlow, this incredible accessory for your telescope has the ability to double the magnification of every eyepiece that you own. It does this by increasing the effective focal length of your telescope. For example, my telescope has a focal length of 1200 millimeters. When I take a Barlow lens, it pretty much turns the focal length of my telescope into 2400 millimeters, thus doubling the magnification of the eyepiece that I'm using. Let's take this 25 millimeter eyepiece, for example, that came with my telescope. To determine the magnification for this or any other eyepiece, you're going to want to take the focal length of your telescope and divide it by the focal length of that eyepiece. So by itself, my 1200 millimeter telescope and 25 millimeter eyepiece would provide about 48 times magnification. This is a great starting point for lower magnifications to hunt down objects and even get really nice views of the moon and some of the larger deep sky objects. Now let's take a two times Barlow lens and place it right in between the light path of our telescope and our eyepiece. My telescope has now turned into a 2400 millimeter scope, making the 25 millimeter eyepiece now show 96 times magnification. So with one new piece of equipment, I've basically doubled the number of eyepieces that I have in my collection. When purchasing a Barlow lens or any other type of eyepiece, you're going to want to make sure you don't push your telescope beyond its capabilities. To help determine what the highest useful magnification is for your scope, take the diameter of it and multiply it by 30. For my 8-inch Dobsonian telescope, that's going to tell me that on most nights, the maximum that I can push it in terms of magnification is around 240 times. On very rare nights, if it's crystal clear and steady, sometimes I can push it to 40 or 50 times its diameter, but those nights are few and far between. Save yourself the disappointment of blurry views and don't push your telescope on most occasions past 30 times its diameter. Now that we have an idea of how Barlow lenses work, along with some useful tips to help you determine the best useful magnification for your telescope, let's head outside and do some good old fashioned observing to test this budget Barlow lens with our closest neighbor, the moon. I'm outside on a beautiful night to test out a Barlow lens on the surface of the moon. Tonight I'm gonna to be using the Astromania 2x Barlow lens. I bought this a few years ago for around $20, and I'll be sure to leave a link to it in the description below. But if you simply go to Amazon.com and type in 2 times Barlow Lens, you'll find a number of different companies these days that put out similar products for around the same price. To begin with tonight, let's take a look at the moon just with our eyepiece, the 25mm that came with this telescope. This is going to give us about 48 times magnification on the surface of the moon. Let's start right there to see what we have. Forty-eight times magnification is kind of the sweet spot for me in terms of starting out for observing the moon. It's a low magnification. You're going to get the entire surface of it in your field of view, at least with this telescope that I have right here. And it just really shows off, especially in this early phase of a crescent moon, the shadows moving across the moon the mountain ranges, the terminator line that divides the light and dark portion of it. 
this is my favorite time to get out and observe the moon and it is looking great tonight. Now let's take our two times Barlow lens, attach it to the telescope and see what the results are. Now anytime you add glass to your setup, you run the risk of adding aberrations and imperfections. I've got to say though, this is a pretty clean image, especially for this price range for a Barlow lens. The waviness that you notice is from the moon being low to the horizon and my telescope not fully cooling to the nighttime air. One thing I am noticing though, is you do have to have your eye kind of right over a sweet spot in order to see the full image. If you move or bob your head around a little bit, you kind of lose that sweet spot and the image can get a little bit darker. That's not a very uncommon thing with Barlow lenses in this price range, but I still think it's an important thing to point out. Once you've bought a Barlow lens, be careful not to duplicate magnifications with future eyepiece purchases. Remember that a 25mm eyepiece with a 2x Barlow lens gives the same magnification as a 12.5mm eyepiece without a Barlow lens. Along with a 2x Barlow lens, you'll also find a popular choice being a 3x Barlow lens. Regardless of whichever type you buy, just make sure that you don't push your telescope beyond its highest useful magnification. Overall, I'm very impressed by this. We've got a clean, sharp image of the moon. We have doubled the magnification of our 25mm eyepiece. I effectively have created two eyepieces from this one accessory that I bought. So is a Barlow lens right for you? I think the answer for almost everyone in amateur astronomy is yes. But the type of Barlow lens that you're going to buy is going to depend a lot on the telescope that you currently own. If you've just bought your first telescope, you're gonna definitely wanna go with a budget-friendly Barlow lens for probably under $50. But for those of you with high expectations and high dollar telescopes, you're gonna probably wanna look at something like a Teleview Barlow lens, which can easily run into the hundreds of dollars. It just depends on the equipment that you currently own and what you wanna get out of your views. But for my Orion X-T8i Dobsonian, the budget-friendly Barlow lens is what I almost always go to for my observing, and it almost always pays off in terms of the views. If you've enjoyed this video, please like it and be sure to let me know in the comment section below any questions that you have on Barlow lenses and any ones that you currently own that you'd like to share with others in this community. Thank you all so much for your continued support and clear skies from late night astronomy.